Romans 3, 28 through 31 says, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes, the Gentiles also. Since indeed God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith is one. Do we then nullify the law through faith? May it never be. On the contrary, we establish the law. Well, if you're joining us in reading through this 90-day reading plan, today's reading is Romans 3, and I encourage you to read that passage. There are times when people become confused with the terms salvation, justification, and repentance. All three terms are tied up in our relationship with Christ and our daily walk with Christ. Salvation is not just an insurance policy that gets us into heaven. Justification is not something to be prideful about and walk around with our heads in the air saying that we're better than other people. And repentance is not just a one-time act of contrition. The complete idea of salvation actually occurs in three parts. We are saved the moment we trust in Christ as our Savior, John 1, 12 through 14. We are being saved as we work on our salvation, meaning that we are striving to look more like Christ every day, Philippians 2, 12, 13. And finally, we will be completely saved, meaning made whole, when we stand before Christ in 1 Peter 1, 9. All three aspects of salvation must be contained in that word salvation. Now, justification is a little more difficult to get our head around. In Protestant theology, justification is righteousness that is uh, declared by God upon our faith in Christ. Paul uses an example of this in Romans 4.3, which he quotes in, uh, from Genesis 15.6. Others in the Christian world, such as Catholics and Methodists and Orthodox Christians, and this is a very broad brush, believe that an aspect of salvation justification occurs at baptism. And then that person's life must be filled with a working towards Christ, Many of them acquaint baptism to the Passover or to circumcision, and then note that only two people were older than 20 when they came out of Egypt that actually entered into the Promised Land, those being Joshua and Caleb. Repentance is the final issue that many people have. Repentance actually contains two different parts, an initial phase and a continuing phase. Repentance's two parts are sorrowful and a change of mind. They actually both must occur in salvation, but the change of mind is the key part. You can be sorry about what you've done and not change, but you cannot change your mind about something and continue doing that same thing. Without the actual sorrow, changing of your mind may not be, and the emphasis on is on may not be, the true repentance. And the sorrow may not be one of tears, although it can be. Augustine in 354 through 430 and Gregory the Great 540 to 604, both spoke of something called tears of associated, and uh, they call them tears of repentance. Repentance is also a daily activity. We're to be repentant throughout the day as we sin throughout the day. Remember that repentance is changing your mind about your activity and refocusing it on Christ. So decide who you are in your relationship with Christ and how through repentance you can grow closer to him.